Acts chapter 28. And when they were escaped, then they knew that the island was called Melita. And the barbarous, the bar, uh, barbarous people showed us no little kindness, for they kindled a fire and received us, every one, because of the present rain, because of the cold. Now, these people, they're helpful. Here comes all these people from a shipwreck. They build them a fire to get warm, to, stay, to get dry. It's rainy. The storm is still there. And it's cold. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks, well, look at that, Paul's doing something. Paul's is not sitting back in the fire kumbaya. You know, I need some sticks, I'll go get some sticks. And laid them on the fire. There came out a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. I can always picture that snake, you know, he's, he's got Paul by the hand, and you know, they're just blinking at each other like, yeah. <laughs> That's a funny little thing. When the barbarians saw the venomous beast, venomous beast, hang on his hand, it, it, it bit him and it stained. It doesn't bite him and, and let go and go away. It's attached to Paul's hand. They said amongst themselves, no doubt this man is a murderer. 26.10, 22.4. 9.2, Galatians 1.13. Whom, though he had escaped the sea, the, the shipwreck, the storm, yet vengeance suffers not to live. So these people on this island, if you get bit by a snake, the enchantments and, and witch doctor and sign of the skies and voodoo and whatever you want to think, it means you're a murderer. Well, in this case, it's true. By Paul's testimony. And he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. <laughs> Throws it right in the fire. Howbeit they looked when he had yeah. Howbeit they looked when he should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly. No black and blue, no swollenness, he's not dead. But after they had looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a god. 1411. <laughs> Remember, he, he was Mercurius, or I forget, and you know, the priests are coming to it. Many times, Paul's life is likened to God's. He's gone from a murderer to a god in one morning. And that's how superstitious people are. What is the extent of this snake bite upon Paul? God showed them mercy and grace. There's probably Jews that were on this ship, uh, we are told. Um, verse 37, the previous chapter, 203 score and 16 souls, and probably some of them are Jews. Or maybe these are Gentiles that they need something from, from God to have a little believing. I don't know. But that's one of the things in Mark 16. You know, they shall take up deadly snakes and shall not be armed for the perfecting of the word. In the same quarters were possessions of the chief men of the island whose name was Pobius, who received us and lodged us three days courteously. Man, they're taking care of these people. There's 203 score and 16 souls. That's a lot of people for these people to be taken care of. And don't forget, too, all the stuff they threw off the ship. Well, eventually it's going to come to shore, and these people, you know, grab it, use it, own it. Some of that was wheat, made to be able to use it. And it came to pass that the, the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and a bloody flux, sick, bleeding, whom Paul entered in and prayed and laid his hands on him and healed him. 
So when this was done, others also, which had diseases in the island, came and were healed. So here we are in a body of land surrounded by water. And the news gets out, here's this murderer. Well, wait a minute. He's not a murderer, he's a god. My dad is lying sick, and he heals him, so we bring everybody to Paul, who also honored us with many honors. And when we departed, they, they laded us with such things as were necessary. They gave him water, food, provisions. They took care of him. Uh, 63 AD, like I said, if these dates are correct, 1 Peter would have been written by now. Or should have been written. And like I said, the dates, I don't know about the dates. I'm just giving you an idea when the, 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 the epistles of the Bible have been written through the book of Acts. 2 Timothy would be written after 64 AD. Uh, 1 Peter would be 64 A.D. Jude would be 68, 66 A.D. The Gospel of John 85 to 90 A.D., the latest. 1st, 2nd, 3rd John would be 98 A.D. And Revelation 96 A.D. So, there's still books being written after this chapter of Acts. And after three months, we departed in a ship of Alexandria. You Notice how that keeps showing up which had winter in the isle, whose sign is Castor and Pollux. Pollux is a fixed star in the constellation of Gemini. Castor is very interesting. It's the constellation Gemini. It's also called Apollo. Reminds you of NASA, the Gemini and Apollo spaceship program? Isn't that interesting? The twins. That's what the Geminis are. The twins. Out of Alexandra. You find NASA. Taking Paul as a prisoner to Rome. And landing in Syracuse. My note said um, also that it was a figurehead of these two brothers in the front of a ship. Yep. Which was believed to provide safety for those who traveled at sea. That would be the, you ever see the ships with the, with the women or the eagle? On the, they would have two men or young men. And that would be the front of their ship. And landing at Syracuse. Was well, that funny? Because you got Syracuse, New York. Or no, New Jersey. We tarry there three days. Look how long it's taken Paul. And from thence we fetch a compass, that means encircled, went around, compass is round, 360 degrees, and came to Reglinum. And after one day, the south wind blew, and we came the next day to put Eloni, where we found brethren, Christians, disciples, and were desired to tarry with them seven days. So we went to, toward Rome. So he meets brethren. You know, they're, they're, they're talking, they're meeting. What's going on? How you doing, Paul? What do you got to say to us? Would you uh, speak in our, our home? And from thence, we, the brethren, heard of us. They came to meet us as far as Appii Forum. And the three taverns, who when Paul saw, he thanked God and took courage. Now, this is not taverns. <coughs> <coughs> This is just sea codes, what the names were called. Places of business. And when Paul saw this place, he thanked God and took her. Oh, everything's okay now. Paul's been through a mess since he's been to Jerusalem, hasn't he? And when we came to Rome, that's where God wanted him. How many chapters has it been? How many years has it been? There is where God wanted him. The centurion delivered the prisoners, well, with Paul, to the captain of the guard. But Paul was suffered to dwell by himself with a soldier that kept him house arrest. Paul would bring them to jail, but hey, 
You got your own place, and I'll have a soldier with you. And it came to pass that after three days, Paul called the chief of the Jews together. Paul called them. He got the Jews together. And when they were come together, he said unto them, Men and brethren, lost and saved, Jews and Gentiles, Though I have committed nothing against the people or customs of our fathers, yet I was delivered prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans. The reason why I'm here, I've been arrested. I'm in bonds. I should have been here under God's pretense, but I had to be arrested. I had to be in, in handcuffs, house arrest. I'm here. Who, when they had examined me, would have let me go. And we saw that in the previous chapter. Remember, he said, well, Paul didn't appeal to, to uh, Caesar. We would have let him go. Because there was no cause of death. I'm innocent. But when the Jews spank against it, I was constrained to appeal to Caesar. Not that I had ought to accuse my nation of. Now, listen, I just, you know what? I'm going to go to a higher court and let them decide. You're not going to let me in those radical uh, Christians that want me dead. I mean, those, those Jews. You're not going to turn me over to the priests because they, they're not going to hear nothing. They just want me dead. So let me go to the Roman court. I already had Festus. I already had Felix. I already had Agrippa. All these people are telling me I'm innocent. I need Caesar to say it. And then when Caesar proclaims it, it can shut the mouth of the Jews. For this cause, therefore, have I called for you, to see you, and to speak with you, because that for the hope of Israel, I am bound with this chain. He's still bound. He's still in handcuffs. For what? The Messiah has come. The Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. God should provide himself a lamb. It's come. And they said unto him, we never received letters out of Judea concerning thee. Neither any of the brethren that came showed or spake any harm. Paul, we don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you were arrested? Yeah, we wonder why you had those chains, but we haven't heard no word. All through this journey, I guess the Jews finally got to please it. They're sending them to, to Rome. That'll shut him up. He won't come back. But we desire to hear of thee what thou thinkest. For as concerning this sect, we know that everywhere it is spoken against. Look at that. This Jesus you're preaching about, people are, are talking against it. It is not welcome, Jesus Christ. Did you get that? Marvel not the world hates you. These, you know, and you know what these honest Jews are saying? Listen, we've heard this Jesus preach and we've seen people hate it. Will you tell us about it? What's going on? These people have been waiting for two or three years for Paul to come and teach them about Jesus. Now, that's not an open door. That'd be like me going down to the farmer's market one Saturday morning and they say, you know what? There's a whole bunch of people there and they're there and they're not buying anything. What are you guys doing? We come to hear the gospel. Well, you need to call an ambulance and get the, ambulance and get the paddles. I'm going to pass out. We've heard about this, Jesus. We've heard people complain about you. We've heard people cuss you out. We've heard people tell you to shut up. We've heard people argue with you. We don't understand. Will you tell us about this, Jesus? That would be a wonder. And notice there's been no signs or wonders or anything done. And when they had pointed him a day, they gave him a day, there came many to him into his lodging, his home. Well, how's that? Paul's church was in his home. They came to his house. To whom he expounded, explained, aided, taught, and testified the kingdom of God. 
persuading them concerning Jesus, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets from morning till evening. 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., 12 hours, he dealt with them. How was that for a sermon? How was that for an outline? Amen. Hope he doesn't have another Utica's fall out of the window. And see, the thing is, you know, you got so much junk going on in the church today, you couldn't have a 12 hour meeting service. But you've got the word of God. You've got people are seeking. You've got the power of God here. With I, listen, I know there's, there's heresies going on and all that. But these people are truly seeking God for an answer. And 12 hours of preaching, what did it do? Some believe the things which were spoken. Amen. Got saved. And some believe not. Not a hundred percent. And people today look at these ministries, preaching on the street, these churches, going door to door, passing out gospel tracts, mailing stuff out. You look at, well, where are the results? There's always a result. And the majority of the result is people won't believe. Then why do you do it? Because God told me to do it. What if all the farmers in the world decide one season, you know what, it's not going to plant nothing. That's it. What are you going to get? You're going to get nothing. And when they agreed not among themselves, they departed. After what that, Paul has spoken one word. He spanked the Holy Ghost by Isaiah the prophet unto our fathers, saying, Go unto this people and say, Hearing they shall hear. And shall not understand. And seeing ye shall see. And shall not Listen he's talking. To the Jews that did not believe. And he's saying God has shut your ears. God has shut your eyes. You heard me. You saw me. But you don't have the heart. So go unto this people and say. Hearing ye shall hear. And shall not understand. Seeing ye shall, ye shall see and not perceive. For the heart. You got it so far? It's not ever a brain or heart. I mean mind condition. It's a heart condition. Jesus said out of the heart comes adulteries and, and fornications. And, you know. That Christian cuss. Where did that come from? Came from your heart. Where does salvation come for an individual? It comes from the heart. I believe Jesus Christ has saved my soul. That comes from the heart. Well, I was baptized. I joined this church. That's not heart. That's works. Works is not heart. And the hardest people is wax gross. I like God describing his people. I look at your heart and it's gross. You ever see pictures of a heart that's been diseased and fat, cholesterol? And their ears are dull of hearing. Huh? It's not that they can't hear, it's they don't hear at all. And their eyes have they closed, are blind. They can hear, but they can't see. Least they should see with their eyes. Why? Why would God say, I'm going to blind people? Because their heart is not right. But I've been praying for uh, Uncle John and it is, his heart ain't right. It's got to be heart. 
And we want to jump in there with this prayer. We want to jump in and do this. We got to let the Holy Spirit work on the heart. And there may be, just a sorry fact for Uncle John, is his eyes have been closed because he chooses to believe anything but God. You're going to say that somebody who believes in evolution, let's just take evolution, a non-God, science, Everything's getting better and better. Do you think outside the presence of the Holy Spirit, that guy's going to get saved with his heart? Absolutely not. God's going to blind him because he's already turned his heart against God. She hear with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and should be converted. Notice the heart is in reference to the conversion and I should heal them. Be it known, therefore, unto you, that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles, and that they will hear it. Paul stands in Rome. He's preaching to the Jews. He gathers them together. We believe. We don't believe. You guys, you just your heart is wrong. From this point on, I'm going to the Gentiles. But he still has that love for the Jews. And that they will hear it. Look at that. You won't hear it. The Gentiles will. See, the Jews are stuck on it. Look who I am. Pride and arrogancy. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I'm rich means God is with me. Well, humble and, and repent and get right. Sell some of your riches and give them to not me. Look at my wonderful life, how great I am. Yeah, look how your, your heart is just gross. And when he had said these words, the Jews departed and had great reason among themselves. What did he mean? What's he saying? What's going on? Why would he say that? Why would he do it? He going to go to those people? Ew. And he just imagines it's a back talk. And Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house, his house he rented. Paul rented a house in Rome and received all that came in unto him. There are people that came to Paul for the gospel, for Jesus, and he come on in, let's talk. They were coming to Paul. Yeah. Oh, we're going to have revival in America. I have not had anybody but the Jehovah Witnesses come to my door and try to speak to me about the Bible. I can't get fellow Christians to have fellowship with me on the Bible. And you're going to proclaim a, a, a great revival breaking out? You can't even get Christians to do what's right. We're coming tomorrow, Thanksgiving 2016, and you wonder how many Christians in this world today or in America won't even have any idea to even thank Jesus Christ tomorrow. As they woo-hoo over the turkey stuff in, in the pigskin being flown back and forth. As their wives hurry up and do the, do the dishes so they can go shop the credit cards like crazy. And won't even give any thought. I'm talking about Christians. Won't even give God and Jesus Christ any thought at all. And you're going to expect a revival. There are people coming knocking on Paul's door saying, hey, let's talk. It's a remarkable. His own higher house and received all that came in unto him. Preaching, this is what they came to his house. Preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ. With all confidence. No man forbidding him. The Jews were not stopping him. He, he's, he's too busy with the, with the Gentiles. We don't need to worry about those Gentiles now. I mean, he'd deal with Jews. Don't tell me he wouldn't, but the primary thing now is the Gentiles and Jews are like, oh, just let him go. He'll fall away. And he'll get wrapped up with those spaghetti, spaghetti, pork-eating, stinky Gentiles. And this is, should have been the end of Paul a lot earlier. Book of Acts shouldn't have been this long. Should have been, Paul, don't go to Jerusalem, go to Rome. Okay, then we would have been shortened by a couple chapters. Paul ends up right, and it says his own higher house, which looks like he's not in jail. 
Looks like he can do whatever he wants. He's not in chains no more. He's got people coming, knocking on his door. He, and look what he's doing. He's preaching. There is no gimmicks. There is no uh, programming. There's preaching. He's preaching the Lord Jesus Christ, nothing else. He don't have time for anything else. Because like me, Paul is looking for the blessed hope to come in the great, our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. And he's busy.